All right, and welcome back. This is a continuation of the Slayer 007 rotorless pulse motor and my replication of his circuit and what I've uh, been able to discover uh, with my experimentation. And he has come up with a second circuit that is very similar to the circuit that I showed in my last video. This is his second um, circuit. I guess it, he came up with the first and then developed the second one. But anyway, there was a controversy as to whether it was going to work or not because of the way it was wired. And it does work. And so I made a replication of it. And uh, this part right here was what was throwing me off, was the grounding of the capacitor uh, down this direction instead of keeping it separate. But uh, it all works. Um, he was truthful as to what it does. It draws more energy to do it this way. But it charges like a son of a gun. It's, it's quite a charger. So anyway, this is the setup here on the kitchen countertop. It's a mess, but it's the only way I could do this in a hurry to show that it does work. And I'm sure he'll be grateful to have someone uh, back him up. So anyway, um, I've got a, a source battery. It's a 12 volt. And I've got a charge battery that is a 13 volt on this side. I'm going to show the voltage on the charge battery and I'm going to show the amp draw on the 12 volt battery. And I'm using a digital because it's a little bit uh, better to see. It's not quite completely accurate but it does give us a better idea of what's actually happening here. And then I've got a little um, analog uh, ammeter on the charge battery to show the amperage going into the charge battery. And a bifolar coil, uh, it's not exactly what he calls for, but it does work. And I changed the reed switch to a pair. And I found out if you put the two together in a parallel pair, they keep each other from stopping. And Mart Hale came up with this ideal for the relays. He put two of the relay chargers together and kept them from sticking. So I tried it with the reed switches, and it did the same thing. And I laid them out here in the coil. Uh, very similar to what Ozzy's uh, circuit was like, where you laid it on top of the coil, and that seemed to work real nice. So, and I'm going into a great big capacitor, and I've got a load, which is a 110 volt uh, night light, to show a load on the capacitor, and then the bridge rectifier, and then a potentiometer, which he doesn't use, but I use to control the base voltage on the transistor, which is right here. Now, the way this is circuited up, this does not run as hot as the way I did it. So that's a plus on his circuit, is it seems to keep that from running too hot, which was a real good idea. But let me show you what's going on. I'll connect the source battery here. It's 12 volts. And there's the, uh, the amp draw on the source battery. That's amp draw. There's my CFL running, going through the coil, through the transistor, into the capacitor right here. Now the capacitor's got a load showing right here. That's voltage on the capacitor with the load. Now if I turn the load off, watch what happens to the voltage on this capacitor. It just goes right on up. This will go up. I, I stopped it at 130 volts. When it got up to 130, I turned it off. It was uh, I didn't want to zap uh, zap this bulb, so I turned it off. But it's tremendous charging on this circuit. So let me turn this back on here. See that bulb come on bright. Let me set the camera down here. tight switch on that light, but anyway, this will go on back down to the 30 some odd volts, just like on the circuit that I had going on. Now, I do not have the charge battery hooked up right now. There's the draw again on the system at 240 milliamps. Now, I'm going to connect the uh, charging battery up here. Watch the voltage on the cap go down. Okay, there it goes down. Now, this increased the draw on the system, okay? Now, that's what he was telling us, is you're going to increase the draw on this. The other part of it that I was concerned about was his ground right here, on that part right there on the cap. And let me show you, if I disconnect the ground here, this is a ground wire, that will go down. But you lose some of the charging when you do that. So... 
it's one of these trade-offs. You get um, more charging or less amp draw. So it's just a trade-off. But something else I discovered here on this circuit is if I disconnect the coil circuit part of this and just run the bi-filler, this will keep right on running, but the amp draw goes down. Look at the amp draw. It went down to 90, 100 milliamps. But this is still charging. Let me pull off the battery and I'll show you the cap go right on up again. And there goes the capacitor. Now this is running on the bifiler, not the ignition coil. So I've still got charging going on without the CFL running. So you have multiple options with this circuit. And uh, this is something that I do kind of like is uh, this circuit that he came up with um, has multiple ways of running and uh, that is nice so like if you didn't want the light and you just wanted to charge on this circuit you can uh, do this a different way um, anyway it does work and like I say this is a very interesting setup that I've got here in the kitchen but uh, this um, Slayer 007 circuit that he has developed does work it does uh, do what it's supposed to do and that uh, charging battery goes right on up. Uh, this uh, amp meter, you can't really see it. You can see it bump a little bit. But it's uh, about 15 to 20 milliamps that you get out of the uh, charging part of this. Anyway, that's, that's the experiment for today is Slayer 007's second circuit.